Hey, what's happening, ready? I wanna show you in this video how to use Nellify Forms in React. So when I type my first name, my last name, my email address, and I will write, sure, yes, some comments in here. When I submit the results, thank you, your submission has been received. And in Nellify Forms, if I refresh it for one second, it pulls up in Netlify Forms, and the extra cool part is it emails me my information that I submitted using Netlify Forms. And with that, let's get started. All right, so I'm running a React app courtesy of Gatsby, and I have my terminal over here just in case I have any error messages or any warning messages as well. And I have my hot reload on my local host 8000. So the first step I have to do is take out Hello World and I'm gonna build a form. So what I have to do is add form and close form. There's a few pieces you have to add to the form, literally the form tag, in order for it to work inside of Netlify Forms. The first thing I have to add is a name, and I will say equals. This is a contact form, so I'm gonna say contact v1. Now there's a reason why I give it a v1, and I'll show you why down the road in this video. After that, we have to add a method. The method is going to either be a get or a post. In this case, we're posting results or posting feedback. So we'll say post. And then we're gonna say data Netlify equals true. And I'm gonna run out of room on my screen, so I'm gonna hit the return key and just drop it down just so it's a little more in visual working order. Data Netlify, true, and we'll drop the close. Perfect. After this, I have to say on submit equals submit to then create a button to correlate with the submit to submit the results. And I've just said submit like four or five times in one sentence. So after these four are added, I'm gonna go out of the form tag and say button and the type is gonna be a submit button. And from here, we'll say submit the results. And now we have our button that says submit the results. Awesome, cool. So now let's add some extra fields to collect data for our contact form. Per the rules of Netlify, I also have to add a hidden input. So I'm gonna say input type, this is gonna be hidden and the name of this can just be form name, nothing valuable in this one. But the next part is I have to say value equals the same name as the form name. So in this case, the contact V1 will be the same as the value of this hidden input. We'll say slash, it's a self-closing. Oh, I just ran out of room on that one, but it still closes. And again, because it is hidden, you're not going to see this. Perfect. Now let's add a first name, an email, and a place to type comments in. So after this hidden area, I'm gonna put in a div to create the area for the first name. I'm gonna say label first name, and we'll drop the label down. And inside of the label, I'm gonna say input type equals text. Now the important part to add is the name of this input. So I'm gonna say name first dash name. And because it's an input tag, I can self close it. If I save it, there it is. Now I want that little field area to go below first name. So I'm gonna simply add a break tag just to drop it down. There we go. You might have it more stylized in your CSS, but I don't as I have no CSS. Thereby I'm just giving a little spacing just so I can see it visually on the screen. After the first name, we have to add the email. So I'm gonna add a div and I'm gonna add a label. Now notice also that I put the label and the input where it's nested. The label is around the input. But if you wanna put the label outside the input, you have to declare the label attached to the input. So how I can do this is in the label area, I can say email, and I can also add the break tag outside the label. And now when I put the input, input, 
The type is going to be email. And the name is going to be email. Perfect. And we'll self-close it. Now, note when you do it this way, you will get a warning message that says a form label must be associated with a control. So if you want to set up your label this way, what you have to do is we have to say label and then HTML4 equals, and we'll say email. Then we'll then change or add the input and we'll say ID equals email. And that you can attach the label and the input ID and get out of the warning. It will work, but I try to make sure I don't have any warn messages, if at all possible, in my terminal. So far, so good. We have our name and we have our email, but what I do next is I want to add a section for comments. So div, drop it down. And in here, we'll do label. Drop that down and back up to the top of label. I'm going to say any comments. Let me add this, not the space in there. Any comments? Perfect. We'll add our break tag to drop it down a line. And then inside the label area, which I want to put, is a text area. Text area ID comments. Actually, I don't need the ID because of the label is inside of it. So text area name comments in here and open and close and we're all set. And if I save it, there is my comment area where I can then type in some comments. Unfortunately or fortunately, not quite sure how you want to look at it, that I can't test the results. If I say submit the results, it doesn't do anything because we haven't actually uploaded this file onto Netlify Forms. So I'm going to head over to GitHub. Where is my Safari? And if I pull up my screen for GitHub, I'm going to add this repository into GitHub and then attach it to Netlify. In this case, I'm going to call this one, where am I going to call it? React Netlify Forms Test. And I'll set it to private for right now and I'll create a repository. And perfect. Let me add it. We'll stop it. Paste in the data. Move this up a little bit. Perfect. We'll then add our initial push. Git add star. Git commit. My first push with contact v1. Cool. Git push origin main. With any luck, we should be good to go. Perfect. If I refresh my page on React Netlify Forms test, everything is all set with my first push with contact v1. Awesome. Let's now head over to Netlify and see if this actually works. So netlify.com. I'm going to log in. And a new site from Git. GitHub. It's going to authorize it. And I can simply search for React Netlify. And there it is. Perfect. Deploy site. And I will pause the video and come back when it finishes building. And through the magic of time, it is now working. So the first thing I make sure is when it says published, it doesn't say failed. That's always a good sign. And now if you notice at the top, there is a forms. And if you click on it, it says contact V1. Notice the contact V1 matches the contact V1 for the form name. Let's give it a try and see if it works. Site overview, I'm going to click on the URL, type in my first name and my email address. Any comments? Sure. And submit the results. Awesome. Thank you. Your, for, your form submission has been received. Fingers crossed. See if it worked. So back on site overview, I'm going to head over to the forms and contact V1 last submission at 832 a few seconds ago. Hey, Hayden and Sure, check it out. It pulled the information in from my fields. First name Hayden, email and comments Sure. Perfect. It works. However, two things. One, what if I want to change the fields in this form? And two, 
I want to prevent spam. I want to have extra spam prevention set up because right now it's not. And I want to make sure that someone doesn't get a hold of my form and stuff thousands and thousands of form entries into my form. So I want to enable two things. I want to be able to change my form for extra fields and I want to prevent spam prevention inside the forms. So let's tackle one of these two. Let's say I want to add an additional field to this. So I have first name, but I want to add a last name to this. So if I come down here and I say, okay, first name, I'm going to duplicate the first name and we'll say last name, last name, and then we'll change this to last name. When I save it, there's some extra space here. I should probably take out and take out. And I'm just noticing I have some extra spaces after my break tags. All right. Now that it's saved, I need to re-upload this and it's gonna then rebuild into Netlify. So if I say git add star, git commit am added a last name, git push origin main, what should happen is it should go up and forms and site overview. And now it is properly building and it is now adding a last name. And this should change as well. Perfect, added a last name. So again, I will pause the video and come back when it's finished. Perfect, it's done building. Refresh to make sure it still is there. And then what I'll do is I will close it and reopen the URL. And now I have a first name, a last name, and an email. So I'm gonna say first name is first name, last name, and any comments? I don't know. Submit the results. Awesome, thank you. So now we head over to our forms. We can see that I have, I don't know, and is first name, last name, and email. Now what I do recommend doing is that if you do change the different fields, what can happen to be a problem is notice now how last name is empty because we created a new field for the forms. What I recommend doing is, if I were gonna change the fields here, what I usually do is I change the numerical value as well. So contact should be now V2 because technically it's a new set of fields of information. This is left empty, it could be good or not good, but I recommend if I change any of my fields, first name, last name, email, that I update the numerical number to reflect a new set of form information. So I'll do that right now. Git add star, git commit am, adjusted oh, field two, two. Perfect, adjusted contact to v2, and git push origin main. Cool, so what's gonna happen is, while this is gonna build, takes a few minutes, I'll talk about it, is now we're gonna see as we'll have a contact v1 and a contact v2. So this is great, but I'm not always going to Netlify to get the results emailed to me. So I wanna actually have a way for it to email me so it'll tell me, hey, you have a contact submission, you better respond to it. So inside of my site settings, if we scroll down, there's gonna be a forms area. And in there, it does tell you how many form submissions are left. And if we scroll down the page, you do get 100 form submissions a month. If not, you gotta pay more to change the level. But what I'm looking for on this page are form notifications. You can get notified by email or Slack or use a webhook to integrate with other services. In this case, I just wanna use an email and I want new form submission on any form. Right now it's contact V1. In a few seconds, it should flip to contact V1 and V2 but I'll put my name in here and I'll say save. And now what's gonna happen is it's gonna email me any results I get from any of my forms. And now I have a contact V1 and a contact V2. I just do it this way so that way I know when I change any fields, I change the numerical value of it working. Now, the next thing I wanna also look at is the extra spam prevention is not set up on this site. So we have to add one more little element for this to work. So the extra spam prevention is built in at the top. So what I'm gonna to say in the form 
is I'm also gonna add one more set of information. I'm gonna say data Netlify honeypot equals bot field. We have to add one more hidden type of information for this to work. So after on submit, data Netlify honeypot bot field. I'm gonna add one more section. So I'm gonna say div hidden. And in this div hidden, I'm gonna add input name equals bot field. And we'll self close with the input. What this will do is this will create an extra field that if a bot were to come through, they would actually run it and actually fill it in, which then will turn into spam. So the hidden is pretty cool because that's just a JSX attribute and it'll essentially make it hidden from site on my page. Let's do git add star one more time, git commit, added a honeypot, and git push origin main. And now what this will do is it'll add spam prevention on our fields. So we'll site overview this. It's now building. So far, everything's publishing, no error messages. And again, I can double check in Gatsby Develop if there's any error problems, but I'm just adding very simple little pieces. And I'm not adding any extra labels or whatnot. So far, it should be good to go. And if we take a look, yes, I do want to resubmit the form. We're not seeing the input type hidden or we're not seeing the div hidden as well in our JSX. We should almost, oh, it is published, perfect. So after this publish, I'm gonna, gonna run the site and I'll say John Smith, and I will use my email address. Any comments? None whatsoever. Perfect, submit the results. Thank you. Now what I should get inside my forms in contact V2, it says extra spam prevention enabled via honeypot field and none whatsoever. And John Smith, there's my email address, none whatsoever. Now if I come over to my email, what I should also get is an email that matches the information right here. First name, last name, email, comments. And the cool part about it is that it'll eventually, my email address knows who I am, but basically it'll put my reply to information as the email address. Of course, it's my name and my software. So it auto filled my name, but normally it'll just fill the email address in here and form submission from contact V2 and it is from essentially a no reply from Sharp Finneyman, netlify.app, which if you can see is just form responses of netlify.com. But the reply to is your email address that was been sent to. And this is basically how you can create forms in React. If you want more videos helping you design more and troubleshoot less, check out the videos I have here and don't forget to subscribe. As always, I'm Hayden Adams with A Designer Who Codes. Thanks so much for watching and have a fantastic day.